Hi, this is Phil Chandler, and uh, you'll notice that I'm dressed up today, my veil and hat and everything, and don't usually dress this much in this particular apiary, but uh, I've got one colony here that's a little bit, um, how should we say, not as far as friendly as they might be, and it, they happen to be in this hive here, this green thing, which is uh, my conversion hive. And I built this uh, actually some time ago, but I've rebuilt it lately just to um, improve it a little bit for this purpose. And you'll notice it's actually quite deep, um, but in fact the bottom part of it is, uh, it's got a kind of false floor in there and there's a big thick sheet of, um, what's it called, Solitex in there to, to raise the floor. And it's designed to take uh, UK standard national frames uh, although obviously it could equally well take uh, Langstroth if I designed it to those sizes. Um, so anyway, let's uh, just set the camera up properly and you can have a look inside and you can see how I use it. Okay, so the lid, it's just a simple drop over lid. Uh, inside you'll notice I've got some uh, Reflectix um, insulation. It's really just to reflect the heat of the that the bees are generating back down onto them just keeps them uh, more easily at their natural temperature. Um, I've got a water spray with me here just to keep them under some measure of control because they can be a little bit um, lively this lot. Anyway so here it is so it's quite a it's a decent sized colony. What I'm going to do right now is just add some top bars in there because the, pur the main purpose of this hive is to allow me to convert easily from frames to top bars and I suppose theoretically I could convert the other way as well, although I don't actually do that. Um, so you can see it's just got a standard row of frames, there's a couple of empty top bars here and I'm going to add um, I think probably three, possibly four top bars in here. I'm just going to move these frames back here and I'm going to put an empty top bar in the space here. Sorry B. Okay, so there we go. And that's really all that's required. So the, the theory is, and um, I suppose it's a little beyond the theory because I do it all the time and I know very well it works, is that uh, because you're putting empty top bars in between frames, the bees have got no choice but to build nice dead straight comb, which is a great start for a top bar hive because you really want straight comb in a top bar hive. And the way I do this is normally I make, um, I put, I have pairs of frames like this, a pair of frames, and then I put a top bar in between like this. Okay. Oh, you notice, by the way, that the top bars are shaped so that the tab here at the end is approximately the same thickness as the tab on a, on a, a, a national hive. Now, it doesn't matter in this particular hive, but on, when you're using these in other hives, um, you often want this to sit down to the same height as the uh, national frame, so that's why it's reduced in thickness like that. Okay, so here's another one. So I'm going two frames, bar, two frames, bar. I could, of course, work from the other direction, but um, I started doing it this way, so I'll carry on doing it this way. Okay, so there's two frames coming up here. The bees are actually behaving themselves quite nicely, um, but I put the veil on just in case, because you just get the odd one in this colony. I started making this video the other day, and... Uh, one of them came straight out and stung me on the mouth before I could hardly open it, so I've just been a little bit cautious today. Okay, so I've got one, two, three top bars in. I can put another one in quite easily, I think. So let's just move these two. There we go. Make a gap. Add a top bar. Okay, now it's going to take them um, maybe, I don't know, maybe a week, maybe a little bit longer depending on how much food's coming in and there's a good flow on at the moment so they should be fine. Um, but I'm going to come back in about a week's time and we'll see what's been actually made on these top bars in terms of comb. 
I'm just debating whether to put another one in there while I'm at it. I could do, it's a strong colony, there's loads of bees, um, and it's the right time of year, so I'm just gonna crank these back a bit. Sorry guys. This hive would be improved, I realise, by the addition of um, metal runners uh, to reduce the friction when I'm doing things like this, when I'm moving frames. Um, so that's something I might add. It's just resting on wood at the moment. Uh, while I'm here, I just want to show you this frame here. Um, nice honey frame. Lots of open nectar, lots of sealed honey. There are several frames like that. So I know these guys are good, even if the weather changes. I've got a gap there, so now I'm going to drop the last top bar in. Come on, girls, move over. Out the way, that's it. These are Hoffman Space frames, and if you add a, a top bar in between, you'll find the spacing is just fractionally larger than it, or is than the standard Hoffman spacing but that's okay I use 38 millimeter bars and I found from you know quite a few years uh, testing now 38 millimeter bars work really well for me that doesn't necessarily then mean they'll work perfectly for you in your conditions and with your bees but with these bees and with my conditions around here 38 millimeter wide bars work perfectly I get nice straight combs and uh, everything's good. So now they've got one, two, three, four, five top bars in amongst their frames and that will give them some more space to work in. I'm just going to dust them with, uh, with water. This, this is a water spray, it's just got a little bit of uh, peppermint oil in it. That's all I ever use. I haven't used smoke for years on my bees. Um, and it works really well. So I'm just going to cover those up like that. This stuff, uh, another benefit of this, uh, you could say, is that it's really light. So if you actually lay it down over the bees, I mean, I know it's not really quite making contact with the tops of the frames, but you, you know that you can put this stuff in and it won't crush any bees. So that's a really nice little advantage as well, I guess and you guys can come off the edge and I won't crush you. Oh, there you go. So, lid's back on, come back in a week's time and uh, we'll see what's what. So here we are about a week later and we're gonna have a look at the combs on these top bars and see if they're suitable for moving into a top bar nuke, which I've got ready over, just over there. I'm just going to put basic um, face protection on this time. So just warn the bees that we're about to do something. Just give them a little gentle spray. They seem in a reasonably cooperative mood today, so let's hope they stay that way. Now then, so we can see straight away that there's a certain amount of bracing being going on. So they've been building brace comb, which I'm going to just have to quickly cut through. Not very much of it, actually. All right, so here's the first bar. So here's the first bar. They, as you can see, they've hardly done anything on that one. They've just started building comb. So let's put that one aside over here. As I work back through these, I'm not going to force them to build any more comb this year. It's getting a bit uh, late in the season. Um, had this been uh, May or even June, I would probably have taken these bars out and put some new ones pretty much in straight away. But it's now mid-July, so it's getting towards the end of the time when the bees are really enthusiastic about building comb. But nevertheless, you can see here we are, they've built uh, a nice bit of comb on there and they've filled it with nectar. So that's a good start. I'm 
just putting these uh, combs straight into the nuke box over there. We'll have a look at, another look at them in a minute. So as I work, I'm closing up behind me and at the same time just taking a, a quick look at uh, what these bees are up to. Okay, so there's loads of pollen, there's sealed brood, so everything's good in there. Just closing up as I go. This next cone is pretty impressive. Here we go. So in a week or so they've built a full, pretty much a full cone, which I'm actually going to have to trim slightly to get it into the top bar hive. And the queen has also laid it out pretty much. I can see uh, there's seal brood here, of course, there's open brood and there's eggs and small larvae there. So she's done a pretty good job on that. And we're actually going to have a look here um, to see if we can actually see the queen on this cone because it's possible that she's on here. In this particular case, I don't want to take the queen out of this hive, although that would be an option. Um, okay, she's not on there. This is a marked queen, so I, I can see her. I will be able to see her pretty much straight away. Uh, no, she's not on this comb. So, okay, that's a nice comb of larva and seal brood to go straight into the nuke. Now I am going to say, uh, as I said before, I am going to have to trim this slightly to get it into the um, profile of the hive. So uh, I'm going to do that. Actually, I'm going to get my, um, I've got a special pair of scissors for this job. Here are my special scissors. They're surgical scissors, um, naturally, for cutting through comb. And I'm just going to have to take a, uh, a guide from the hive itself. Okay, so I'm just going to estimate roughly. This side's got to be trimmed back a bit, so we're just going to nudge the uh, bees aside because we don't want to be decapitating any bees in this. There we go, so we're just going to cut through here. Excuse me, bee. Actually, I'll tell you what, it would be easier if I made these blades wet. So with my, just gonna rest that in there a minute with my water spray, I'm just gonna wet the blade because that will, I think, help so it doesn't stick to the wax. Come on, out the way, here we go. Come on. Okay, so that's, that side trim. Now this side's going to be something along that kind of line. There we go. And that's perfect. That goes into the hive nicely. And we've got a nice central comb to work with. Now obviously um, I'm making up a proper nuke here, so obviously I'm going to need bees in there. And so the bees that are on that comb will be the first, uh, the first to go in. I'm going to go back to the hive and take another comb. Bees are being fairly cooperative at the moment. Excuse me, bees. Again, a little bit of brace comb there, but that's okay, not looking too bad. And here's another top bar. And again, beautifully done. They've drawn out the comb very nicely, and the queen has filled it with eggs, which are now uh, in the pupils, uh, most of them, well, no, say most, a number of them are sealed, therefore in the pupation stage, the rest are still open brood, and just checking to make sure we're not accidentally taking the queen, in this case we're not, because, I know that because, as I say, she's marked, and I would spot her, she's got a red dot on her, being this year's queen, and everything's good there, so I can put that straight into the hive, I think. It does need just a very slight trim, so I'll just do that. Let's 
make sure I'm not amputating any B parts here. Very good. Right, so that can go in. There it is. There's one more top bar here. I'm not sure that it's got anything on it though. In fact, it hasn't. There's nothing on this one at all. They haven't started building on this. I think I built this nuke a while ago. It's a few years old and I was using slightly narrower bars. I may have calculated the width for the narrow bars. Oh, no, that's going to work. Okay, so that's good. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. It's a six bar nuke. Okay, six bar, top bar nuke. The, the bars fit perfectly. 38 mil bars. Um, so that's great. It's uh, ready to go, and the only thing, of course, it's short of now is a queen. Now, the other thing I would probably do at this point, in fact, I will do, um, is to give them some more bees because really there aren't enough bees in there to properly look after that brood. Um, what I have done already is to put some uh, actually bracken fern in the bottom of the hive. It's got a mesh floor, this nuke, as, as my nukes tend to have for ventilation, uh, especially when traveling. Uh, so it's got a bit of bracken on the floor and some fondant on top of the bracken. And that's so that things like wasps can't get through uh, and help themselves to the, um, to the food. So the bracken separates the fondant from the floor and the bees have got access to food straight away. So our nuke is good to go, except that it needs a few more bees, so I'm going to shake some bees in. Um, so there's a bunch of bees on this comb here. I'm just checking for the queen, make sure she's not on it. She's not, so we'll shake those bees in. Here's another comb with uh, largely sealed brood. No queen on there, so we'll shake those in. And one more just to make sure that they've got enough bees in the box. So just again checking, make sure we haven't got the queen. You can of course make a queen right nuke, there's nothing wrong with doing that as long as you uh, know what you're doing and have a reason for doing that. But in this particular case I don't want to do this because I'm going to give this colony a new queen anyway. We do have uh, quite a lot of bracken in this area and it's actually really good for making an improvised bee brush. So I'm just going to pop those back in. This is where the uh, water spray comes in handy. We can just give them a light dusting and uh, that's a signal to them to go indoors to get out of the weather. Come on girls, it's raining over here. And you go. This way. Girls and boys with some drones amongst this lot as well. Come on, you go. <laughs> okay, well some want to go, some don't, so. Okay, so that's uh, those bars are pretty tight fit there, so which is makes the whole thing nicely bee tight. 
there's a few strays here which will find their way back into the other box. Come girls, off you come. And this nuke has a simple solid lid like this, which is held in place by a couple of bendy wire things. Now at the moment the entrance is open. I'm actually going to close it up. Another good use for bracken. Go on, Joni, you go in. Right, so that entrance is now closed and our nuke is complete, except at the moment it doesn't have a queen, but I'm going to let them settle down a bit before I give them a queen cell and uh, then I'll locate them to their new apiary wherever that turns out to be. So there we go, and we're back to the original colony here. It just remains for me to close this up, get this frame spacing right again. And we'll just let them get on with their lives. <laughs> 